is Devontae Adams remains a Raider despite all of the trade rumors. Head coach Antonio Pierce ignored questions last week about the situation, and he's not answering them now. Here he is at the podium. I don't know. I, think I got eyes to monitor them. What, what is the latest on the Pets? It's status quo. All right. Status quo. Been traded. Uh, give me a sleeper. We thought that it was going to be the Ravens Friday with the whole Edgar Allan Poe thing. You got any sleepers out there for for Devontae? I, I, I can't see how the Jets I go think for I, I just talked to somebody Sunday. He said because of his age and what he's going to cost, it's not a first-round pick, and it may not be a second. Mm. It could be a third. And then some, like third and a six or third and a later pick. Oof. So the Raiders spent at least a first-round pick on him to get him from Green Bay. Might have been two. And now they're going to get a third. Ooh, that's not a good ROI, huh? Oh. Typical Raiders running a good business. Well, here. come on now. They have new people running the show. The new oh, day. Oh, that's right. Your buddy. Uh, <laughs> to let's, uh, apologies, Tom. He got Brock Bowers. First draft. Brock that's... Bowers looking good. <laughs> hey, who's the quarterback there, by the way? What? Well, they got to find one. Okay. There's some garage sales this weekend. <laughs> See if they can find an old lamp. Wow. For, for a discount. Uh, J-Mac with the news. All right. Well, it's weird that Colin was just defending the Raiders there for a second because before before the season started, I think it was, he kind of ripped them and said how poorly run of a of an organization they are. Um, yeah, I'm curious how Raiders fans feel this whole thing unfolding now with Devontae. I kind of asked this question earlier, but now that it's kind of being stretched out um, also after the loss that they just had, you know, where... Where do you stand with your team right now, right? Like, where do you want them to go? Where do you think the problems lie? Um, quarterback, defense, offense. Because, um, yeah, right now, it's, you know, it, it's hard to win right now, the, the way how everything is unfolding. And I think, actually, Minshew played pretty well. Um, I know he had a terrible interception, um, but the opening drive, uh, the jump ball touchdown from Minshew, I think was awesome. Um, I think he was, I think he was really alive and, and energetic in that first half. Um, and then again, you know, a, a terrible pick six, which unfortunately those things happen, but obviously not ideal. Um, and then the second, second interception was forced. And I questioned the play calling at that point, quite frankly, um, because we see, when you have a quarterback like Minshew, right, who's obviously not this top level, top five, top ten quarterback, but when you when you accurately ha when you when you have a high quality game plan and smart play calling, you can have a quarterback like Sam Darnold, Joe Flacco, Garner Minshew. You can see how you can have legitimate success, but you can't put these quarterbacks in a position to hurt themselves quite frankly. And so that's where then I question what is the game plan? And again, you know, the O-line, you know, Minshew was just under pressure all game. Um, and so, and again, the run game, I mean, right, the run game was really not, was nothing. They did have the one big chunk play for 40 yards runs. But outside of that, they averaged under three yards per carry. Under three yards per carry. The league average is like four and a half. So that's devastating. I've said this so many Raiders videos. That becomes devastating. You cannot win games running the ball averaging under three yards per carry. You just can't. Even if you do get a chunk play here and there. Like a chunk play can be helpful. It can help kind of nudge the defense to being a little bit more honest and, and think about it. But when you then hand the ball off and you get two yards, no yards, negative one yard, negative two yards, it's just nothing. And that that becomes a fundamental issue with the Raiders right now. I understand the offensive line isn't great, but you have to then just be a little bit more strategic how you get a run game going, how you can get easier passes for Minshew. Um, because it, it just becomes too hard. I'm really curious. I mean, like, look at this game now, okay? The Steelers are only favored by three points against the Raiders. People were considering the Steelers a top team in the NFL. That's what everyone's telling me right now. Everyone's telling me that the Raiders are trash 
and that the Steelers are are the are a top team in the NFL with a top defense in the NFL. And yet it's only favored three. So which is it? Is it that the Steelers aren't that good? Or is it the Raiders aren't that bad? That to me is an interesting question. I think it's a combination. I think the Steelers aren't that good and the Raiders aren't as bad as people think they are. The Raiders can have a chance to get some momentum going, but they have to be smarter with their game plans. Their game plans are driving me crazy, quite frankly. Like that, I find the game plans very frustrating. Um, yeah, you don't have a quarterback in Minshew who can overcome any of these issues. Many teams don't have a quarterback that can overcome a lot of issues. But I can't help but feel like if the Raiders just had a better game plan and a better plan of attack in any given moment, you can have success. And again, look no further than what Shane Steichen was able to do with Minshew. And look what Shane Steichen was able to instantly do with Joe Flacco. Right? Like it, it really matters. If you have a, if you can set your quarterback up to not hurt you and you have a good defense and a run game, you can rip off eight, nine plus wins. Seriously. And then you're fighting for a wild card spot. I mean, the division's going to be, you know, the, 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 the Chiefs would have to just go off, obviously, on an epic losing streak. So you have to imagine the Chiefs are probably going to win the division. So now that the Raiders are like, okay, at least now you kind of know what is the objective. The objective is wild card. And there's a lot of teams in disarray. You beat the Steelers. It's, you're now starting to slowly leapfrog them in the wild card. They will probably not win the division, the Steelers. The Ravens will end up probably winning that. The Bengals are all over the place. The Browns are awful. The Jaguars are awful. You know, there's a lot of inconsistent teams in really the NFL as a whole right now, but definitely the AFC as well. So a wild card spot is there. Can Justin Herbert stay healthy? Will Bo Nix start to really get it? Or is he just going to have, you know, an in, inconsistent season where one game's good, one game's bad. One game's good, one game's bad. So it is there for the Raiders. If they can just get organized, have better game plans. Don't try to turn Minshew into a superhero. Just be smart. Be conservative. Find a way. I know it's easier said than done. I know it. But find a way to run the ball. You have to figure something out. You can't just say, well, we just don't have a run game right now. That, that's, that's... Be more innovative. Look what Andy Reid, I'm sorry, Chiefs fan, I'm a Raiders fan, but look what Andy Reid's doing with his ragtag group of running backs. Obviously, you have Mahomes. Obviously, you have some weapons. Obviously, it's Andy Reid, but they're still able to find a way to run the ball without a top running back in the NFL. So you got, you got to find a way to be able to do it. You got to. Otherwise, yeah, then you're, you're, you're not going to be able to make some noise this season. You're not going to be able to find your way into the playoffs. And I think this team, if they can just find their intensity, start to kind of believe in themselves more, then they can be that disruptor. They can be the spoiler. They are the one that then beats the Chiefs, beats the Steelers. Right? beats the Texans. They, they can be that team where you're just like, no one saw this coming. And you're like, well, we did. So to me, it's just find the run game. Find the run game. Be smarter with your play calls for Minshew. Don't put him in a position to hurt himself or the team and you will win games. Don't overcomplicate things. Play strategic situational football understand that the name of the game is to try to dominate the clock and play great hard physical defense and attack the quarterback of the opposing team obviously you do that you're going to win some games it's how you won games last year it's how you beat the chiefs last year it's how you beat the super bowl winning chiefs last year so do it follow that game plan you you discovered it last year but they're not executing it this year. Execute it now. It starts versus the Steelers. Four o'clock Sunday. Let's go. But those are just my thoughts. I'd absolutely love to hear yours.
what do you guys all think about the Las Vegas Raiders? Um, what do you think about that? You know, the Steelers, again, they're, they're leading the division. Um, what do you think about this spread? My, you know, negative minus three, giving, you know, getting three points at home. Pretty interesting. But those are just my thoughts. I'd absolutely love to hear yours. Um, let me know in the comments below. I read every single comment. So whether you agree with me or disagree with me, either way, let's get in some discussions. Let's get in some fights. But ultimately, let's just have some fun. And please do consider subscribing. We are building an amazing community here, and I'd absolutely love to see you part of it. I want to build something that we all genuinely feel connected to, something that we're really excited to be part of. I think we're on our way to doing it. And please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up as it really does help with the visibility and the algorithm. Thank you so much and see you next time.